What's going on guys? Today I have probably one of the biggest come up SUVs of the year. This is the Hyundai Santa Fe, but this is a special one. This is a trim level that just came out, just hit dealerships. It's called the Calligraphy trim, okay? If that sounds familiar, you'd be right because I reviewed a Palisade that they also offered the calligraphy trim for. So today we're gonna go through this car and I'm gonna show you why this thing has features that rival that of a Mercedes, except for the price tag. This thing stickers at about $43,000, almost 44 after destination, guys. So with that being said, as we go through this vehicle today, I want you to think about some of the features that you're gonna find in this thing and see, wow, that's insane. So today we're gonna go through this Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy and I'm gonna show you the ins and outs and I'm gonna show you why this thing could be a pretty good buy in its segment. So let's get to it. Don't forget, before we start this video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that bell in the upper right hand corner so that way you get alerts every time I release a video. I've got a lot of things in store for you guys. So I've got a lot of good content coming to you. So subscribe to the channel, support the channel. That way I can keep giving you guys content, walkthroughs on cars, opinions on cars, things like that reviews on cars. So without further ado, thank you for all the support that I've gotten so far. We just hit 500 subscribers. I know that's not a lot in the world of YouTube, but to me that means everything. So I do want to say thank you to everybody that is subscribed to the channel and that does support the channel. So really appreciate you guys. Let's get back to the video. First thing we're going to talk about is the front end. So this is the 2021. So the Santa Fe has just received a facelift because this is the current generation model. Now the facelift does include a new running light. So the old running light was just a little dotted LED pattern here. Now it's this T shape kind of looks like Thor's hammer. Um, that is a reference to Volvo by the way, because their LED lighting is very similar. This is the calligraphy trim. So all the lighting is full LED, your low beams, your high beams, you've got your um, running light, but it also doubles as an indicator up there. Okay. So, they're continuing that trend of having the main headlight unit in this bottom part of the fascia. So that is something that they've changed about the Santa Fe. Over here, you do have these functional air ducts. So of course that helps with aerodynamic efficiency, but it's also gonna be used more so for styling. And also if you do decide to tow with this thing, maybe a small trailer or something, it can help with brake cooling. Now, stylistically, this is a bl uh, black vehicle with the silver trim here. So you notice the silver that goes all the way through the front end looks very sharp. It's a really good contrast because again, this is a luxurious trim. You'd get it in a luxurious color like black. In addition to that, look at this grill. So this grill, as big as it is, it does have these little notches in here. And this is a completely open grill. It's not really closed off. There are some spaces that are filled in by plastic, but who cares? Um, it almost looks to be this kind of black chrome kind of uh, paint. I don't know what material they used on it. It does look pretty sharp, but in the same token, I don't know what this design is. It looks very geometric in nature. So it kind of throws me off a little bit, but it still looks pretty nice. You got the big H emblem here for Hyundai, of course, and then you do have a front camera because this car does have a surround view camera system. In addition to that, you do have your parking sensors in the front and rear. We'll go over that in a little bit. And then you do have your brick for the radar cruise control. Not a shock there. And then as you can see, that painted portion actually goes underneath the vehicle. Even though this is an all wheel drive vehicle, they did keep this part painted. So if you do go off road or anything like that, try not to hurt this part, okay? Um, now, as far as the hood goes, you can see not really a bulging hood. Cause again, this thing doesn't have a big motor in terms of like a big V6 or anything like that, but it does have a very potent four cylinder in this thing. It's got the Kia Hyundai Group's updated 2.5 motor. You saw it in my Genesis G80 video, but this one actually is tuned a little different. This one has about 280 horsepower, over 300 foot pounds of torque, which is honestly a monstrous figure for pretty much any engine in this class, but for a four cylinder, that is ungodly. And then it is made it to an eight speed dual clutch transmission to all four wheels because this is their H track all wheel drive system. Now, without further ado, let's get to the wheel set. This wheel set is exclusive to the calligraphy trim. It's got a very, very big geometric pattern. It's almost like one of those old 90s deep dish wheels. I'm kind of wondering where they're trying to take the 
design language for this vehicle because you see the geometric pattern in the grille. You see it here in the wheel. These are 19s. They're wrapped in a 235-55 sidewall. Hand-cooked tire. Pretty meaty tire. Big wheel, which is something that you'd want to see on a car like this, especially at a luxurious trim. I do like that it's machined on the outside, painted on the inside. There's a lot of sparkle in the paint, and I do like that the center cap is actually matching this paint. I'm glad they kept that one color. So overall, it's a really handsome wheel design. It's just, I'm wondering where it fits into the vehicle just because the vehicle has so many different design cues and maybe that's their thing. Maybe they're trying to add so many different design cues. I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm just trying to understand a little bit more. So I will say this is a really good wheel design and honestly, it's meaty enough and I'm sure it's pretty comfortable in terms of ride quality. Getting to the back of the Santa Fe. So first things first, the new taillight design. This I'm actually going to disagree with. The old LED taillight design from the pre-facelifted model was one of my favorite taillights ever. It looked like you were going into this space-time continuum mind-bending illusion thing. I don't know what design they had. It was cool. They simplified it a little bit, made it just individual LEDs here. It still looks really good, but I'm still going to be partial to the pre-facelifted taillight. Um, and then you see they added this new bar here for reflection and then you still have your ace track badge and then you do have the new 2.5 t badge the older models had the 2.0 t because again it had a two liter four cylinder this one's got the 2.5. Um, outside of that you got your rear parking sensors you do have this huge reflector piece at the bottom and then just like the front you do have the silver garnish at the bottom of the bumper followed by these little geometric little incisions here at the bottom of the bumper one exhaust tip and it's not even a dual exhaust it's just one little exit exhaust this car definitely could have favored a true dual exhaust and i'm kind of shocked that they didn't do that especially in a world where a lot of performance trends and yes i'll say performance because this one has the bigger motor include that dual exhaust tip so i'm kind of interested in why they didn't do that other than that you're going to notice that the wiper stock is down here they could have put it up underneath the spoiler. Interesting on why they didn't do that, especially considering the corporate twin, the Sorrento, does do that. You have your LED third light there, and then they do have the shark fin antenna in the back. Well integrated, and it is black just like the roof because the roof is also full glass. So overall, a really handsome design, very simplistic. You can see the light back here has that kind of T-shape, so it mimics the front end really well. So just like I said about the Genesis brand, they're really starting to come into their own design language here and it's starting to really pay off and look really good. You guys already know it's point of view time. So we are in the interior of the Santa Fe calligraphy. Now, you're gonna notice there's a lot of cues from the Palisade. So you do have that full digital dash that I've gone over in both the Palisade and the Elantra and the Sorrento, because it is shared. Here, you do have the 10 and a quarter inch screen with their new updated infotainment system. I've gone over that a little bit. Here in the center stack, it is gonna mimic the Palisades. So you can see heated, cooled seats. With the all wheel drive, you do have the additional lock button here. So if you want to, you can actually lock the center differential. Different drive modes now too, sport, snow, smart. And of course, when you change it, it changes there as well. In addition to that, you are going to have buttons for the transmission. It is shift by wire. They have a metallic finish. It feels really nice, except for neutral. It's got a black finish, and I'm really wondering why. I don't know, to be honest. Um, you do have this really interesting looking trim here. It's not plastic, but it is gloss, and I'm not sure what it's supposed to emulate. Maybe a metal finish. Who knows? Um, in the middle here, you do have your USB cup holder. This is actually going to be your uh, wireless charger for your phone. You get another cup holder here, and then you do have the button to release the middle area here. You've got a deep storage pocket with a little smaller storage pocket. And then once you look into the dash here, you're gonna notice that you have pretty much what you'd expect in a calligraphy. Like I said, you've got that quilted Napa leather with contrast piping. tiered dash that's actually wrapping around which is really neat on the door card here you got your memory seats metallic finish on the door handle and on the buttons power folding mirrors like i said so if you press this button they fold on in 
up and down windows on all four corners. As you can see, you've got that same kind of quilted pattern on the speaker grill here. This does have a Harman Kardon surround sound system. On the steering wheel, you've got perforated leather and you do have metallic finishes on all the switch gear on the steering wheel, which is actually a really nice touch of luxury. In addition to that, you do have paddle shifters. So if you wanna row through all eight gears of that dual clutch, you can. And then a metallic finish here at the bottom spoke. So overall, not a bad design, and it's gonna be hard to pick it up, but you do have that heads up display here as well. Now, you do have Hyundai Kia's new updated frameless mirror. This one does have home link in it. It is auto dimming. Everybody knows I love my mirrors, and yes, this one looks absolutely beautiful. Over here, full LED lights of the interior. And while we're looking up here, look at that suede headliner. That looks absolutely beautiful. Really cool to see that in a car that's under 50 grand, honestly. It's cool to see that in a car that's under 100 grand, more or less. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then a metallic finish for the sunroof button here. I'm gonna do a half pull so it opens up the panoramic sunroof. And look how big that thing is. That thing's actually pretty big. <laughs> Just goes all the way back there. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. You got the Hyundai Blue Link there. So very similar to Chevy's OnStar system. And then you got the mesh grills for the microphones. Why don't we take a peek at what's going on in the back? So I'm sitting here in the back seat of the Santa Fe. Now make note, the Santa Fe is not in a third row configuration like the corporate twin, the Sorento. This is only a two row vehicle. So in saying that, you're gonna have more trunk space back there, but you negate that third row. Here in the second row, you've got a plethora of space. This seat's actually very far back here. As you can see, I've got a lot of headroom. If I wanted to, I can adjust the seat back to change the angle of the seat back, which is really neat because a lot of SUVs don't allow that. And in addition to that, these seats are heated, which is really cool. So if I want to warm myself, I can do that. Um, in addition to that, I mean, the Napa leather, it's super soft, super supple, but these seats are also very, very comfortable. And honestly, the width of the vehicle is very comfortable too. So if you have two car seats or anything like that, it's not going to be cumbersome to get them to fit back here. Let's take a peek at what else is going on back here in this back seat. In the back seat of the Santa Fe, one thing is for sure, that opulence that you have up front is not going away. So you have the same Napa quilted leather seat. In addition to that, you can see the speaker grill still has that similar pattern that you're gonna find up top here. You do have vents at the bottom. You've got a whole 115 volt inverter. So if you wanna plug in a toaster, you can do that two fast charge USBs. And then in addition to that, you do have sunshades here. So if you wanna block out the haters, you can definitely do that. And like I said, you've got heated seats for the rear. They are two stage, metallic finish for the door handle and for the buttons, and then storage pocket here. So if you wanna put a water bottle there, you can. And then you do have storage pocket on the back of the passenger seat, not on the back of the driver's seat. I'm very confused on why they didn't include that especially considering this is a family vehicle. If you're gonna go on long trips, you need extra storage space. And then look at that panoramic sunroof. As you can see, goes all the way back and you still have that beautiful, beautiful suede headliner. Looks really nice. When you're stepping into the back of the Santa Fe, you're gonna notice again, because you negate that third row, you have so much space back here. You've got buttons to let down the second row mechanically so if you want to press those left or right you can just simply press it and it releases it literally that easy 12 volt power outlet storage pocket there you do have tie downs so if you do want to use this for utilitarian reasons you can you've got speakers here for that Harman Kardon surround sound you do have smaller windows in the back here so visibility shouldn't be an issue while driving it and then you do have more lighting in the back here. And then underneath, you're gonna find, once you pull this up, you've got storage space. You do have a pretty much a fix-a-flat kit from Continental. They call it a tire mobility kit. So that is pretty commonplace amongst cars nowadays. Hyundai is following suit here. And then if you actually move this cover up, you're gonna expose another point to pull up and that's just more storage space underneath as well. So overall, 
very good in terms of size utilization. If you have a smaller family, maybe two kids or anything like that, this would be a perfect car in terms of size for that. And if you're gonna step away from the vehicle, all you gotta do, press that button, and that power tailgate comes to a close. Don't forget guys, if you guys need any help finding a Hyundai or Genesis, check out Ed Voiles Hyundai Genesis here in Smyrna, Georgia. They're the ones that lent me this beautiful Santa Fe. And a huge thank you goes out to them for lending me this vehicle. And like always, if you guys need help with anything, you can always ask Reed. I am gonna include his information at the bottom there. He helps literally anybody in the nation. He's dealt with people out of state, in state, you name it, all kinds of credit. He can help you out. Give him a shout. All right, so we're in the Santa Fe calligraphy. Reed's with us again. We're hey. going for this ride. And I'm actually very excited for this specific one. Probably more excited than I am the Palisade calligraphy and more so because this is a class of SUV that you typically don't see ultra luxurious trims like this. In Palisade, you have people comparing it to the likes of like a Chevy Tahoe and things like that, expensive SUVs. In this class of SUV, you typically don't see that. So for Hyundai to put out something like this, pretty much unheard of, especially in the SUV world. So, holy cow, slow your roll, dude. First things first, this is a new powertrain. The motor is shared between the Hyundai Kia Genesis group. And even though it was in that Genesis G80 we drove, it doesn't have the same transmission. The G80 has a torque converter, eight speed automatic, where this has a dual clutch automatic. And if anybody's familiar with dual clutches, they're highly revered, especially in the sports car community, because Ferrari, Lamborghini, etc., has used them a ton. So right off the gate, I'm going to notice that the calibration for the transmission of this thing is meticulous. This thing grabs instantly. It shifts so smoothly. You don't even feel the shifts, honestly. It's, it's a wonder. And that's very important because a lot of economy brands, especially Ford, had made mistakes where their calibration was so bad that they had faulty transmissions or if the transmission wasn't faulty, it was very jerky and just wasn't smooth. That's not the case in this car. The power's delivered very well, and I'm not sure if that's also in due to the fact that this is an all-wheel drive model or not, but the power is very well delivered. And speaking of power, this thing has almost 280, 290 horsepower in this thing. It's got a ton of power, over 300 foot-pounds of torque, out of a four cylinder this thing gets almost 30 miles a gallon on the interstate so for an suv to have that power and that fuel economy in one package absolutely insane and it's regular gas you don't even have to put premium in this thing utility work since when do they do utility work over here <laughs> they're building a lot holy cow so this car hasn't been on the dealership long right no not very long at all so they just introduced this trim level correct yes because previously they had the limited trim which was obviously a very well equipped santa fe but nothing like the calligraphy especially with the suede headliner you've got different design cues those 19 inch wheels they look really really nice but man this thing is pretty quiet on the inside and I think the four cylinder definitely helps because if you had a bigger engine there'd be probably more noise etc but this thing just sounds very quiet yeah. <laughs> holy cow and the price point of this one MSRP is what it's 43 $43,000 $43,000 I can't name a car that's under a hundred thousand dollars outside of the Kia Hyundai group that has suede headliners because we got this, the Palisade, the Telluride, and then outside of that, you have to go to like a Porsche, Ferrari, McLaren to get something like that. I, I just think that's absolutely yeah. crazy that Hyundai and Kia is doing that in an SUV. It's awesome. Uh, material quality in this car is actually very, very good. 
something that the Hyundai Kia group has definitely increased over time, especially in the last five years alone. They've definitely upped their game when it comes to material quality. Hyundai, I think, does a pretty good job, especially compared to their sister brand, in terms of materials they use. I think Kia is definitely that sporty, try to excite you kind of brand where Hyundai is definitely going for that comfort and luxury vibe, which is not a bad thing at all. It just gives you a different option, but it definitely shows because you have these serene materials, the perforated leather on the steering wheel, mm -hmm. Napa leather, which is usually found in high-end luxury brands in this car. I think the thing that they also win is that this is a two-row model where the corporate twin, the Sorento, is a three-row model, which in an SUV of this size, I just feel like you should just stick to one or the other, which they do for this brand. You've got this. If you want a third row, go to the Palisade. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And it's not that much of a price hike. That Palisade was what, 47, 48,000? Mm -hmm. So right. third row, bigger engine for about four or five grand more makes sense. Now, one small thing, and Reed pointed it out to me, that I think is a small attention to detail that I love is the fact that the blind spot indicators are triangles now. They're no longer that little interesting car versus car insignia. Like you pointed out, mm -hmm. Mercedes uses that a lot. So it's just one more thing to kind of incorporate into this brand to make it emulate that higher luxury that people don't necessarily expect from a car like this Oop, someone's angry it's just it just goes to show the lengths they're willing to go to yep. to provide that extra bit of luxury in addition that space utilization of this thing is actually really nice because you got that little partition there in the dash you've got this whole storage space mm -hmm. in between the passenger and driver because they have the shift by wire transmission I mean, they really outdid themselves in terms of that. Kind of curious of what this powertrain feels like because I haven't really got to experience it much with the dual clutch. Holy cow, those shifts are so fast. If you use the paddle shifters, it just yep. goes. <laughs> That's wild. And this is comfort mode too. I can only imagine yep. what it is in sport. Visibility is really good, I'll say that big window in the back Jeez. and I'm sitting pretty low because I always sit low in my cars now have you had quite a bit of interest on the calligraphy trim yes I have and a lot of people you know if they're commuting up north I have one gentleman he has to go to New York from time to time he likes having a snow mode in this all-wheel drive right and um, he has to have an all-wheel drive system oh yeah but just the, the upscale of this with the leather stitched in the door panels and just what right. they've done is, uh, makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that's interesting is Hyundai knows this is not going to be their bread and butter trim on this car. So they haven't done too much in terms of advertising for it. But it's also for a good buyer. I can see somebody who's shopping maybe for like a Lexus or an Acura. Mm -hmm. I can see them going down to something like this because they're still getting a pretty good performance aspect vehicle, mm -hmm. but you're also getting a lot of luxury features, etc. You're not sacrificing on anything. That's and right. styling wise, I think the facelift looks amazing. I think they should have stuck with a pre-facelifted taillights just because those look insane, like you're going into a new dimension, but I get it. They're trying to go for a cleaner look. They're not trying to overstyle it. So I get it. But overall, they did very well with this car. I think Hyundai, they're going to have some uh, trouble with inventory on their hands when it comes to this thing. So, I do want to say another big thank you because I know this is probably, what, your only one on the lot? It is, it is. <laughs> so, I definitely appreciate you guys here at uh, Ed Boyle's Hyundai for letting me actually take a look at it. And like always, you treat me like royalty. I swear, you guys treat me as if I'm like a king in this place. <laughs> like, y'all really, customer service is just amazing. So, I definitely appreciate it. So, like I said, if you guys want to look at this vehicle online or if you want to look at the inventory, the link's going to be in the description. I'll have Reed's information there as well. He helps everybody literally 
around the U.S. I don't know how many cars have you shipped out out of state. Oh gosh, I can't even count them. All. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a bunch. Right. So even if you live, I don't know, in California, don't be afraid. You can hit them up. They will take care of you guys on the Hyundai side, pre-owned side, Genesis side. They got you squared away. So again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.